let's start with the part two of the tutorial the rigging tutorial with physics for this character if you didn't watch the first part check the first steps that i took to start building this character uh, i built the basic structure with the physics so i did some setups for the foot that allow me to put my character uh standing on the tip of the foot and i set up the tentacles with physics they are working very nicely so check the video and then we you can follow from this one for this video i will uh, mesh this part that was missing and i will create the controls for the eye and for the eyelids so the monster can open and close the eyes as well so let's start by meshing this part the workflow you know already i like to use trace with a little bit of padding and then i watch for the symmetry of my image in this case and i watch also for the details that i have in the texture in the painting so in this case i want to preserve some details here from the deformation so but first let's watch the symmetry how it's working now i'll use the center of the coordinates here as a reference the the character is not exactly on a symmetric pose but we can consider like this as the middle of the character so i will create here uh, some vertexes let's check first the, the borders so i have one here one here one here, one here. This one, we we'll get this one. And then I have some. I am deleting just to visualize better, but I will create them again. Uh, just organizing the vertexes. This one goes here so what's missing here this one this one goes here this one goes here from the top part let's put a vertex on the the edge of the stripe here let's make this one also here and this one with this one okay here at the top okay we have we have our symmetry here now let's trace a line on the middle i know i need to trace the the hole on the head so i will create vertexes here and here i don't need the the vertex in the middle because i will create this like a circle so let's start from here and then we go here we can refine this so let's go straight up and then we can go back like dividing it uh, let's put this here on the stripe also this one is already very close this is like the basic so from here let's start creating the the circle that we need for the eyes But before going uh, up on the body, uh, I will create another ring here so I can preserve the details here because you see there is like a volume happening here close to the border. So I want to keep this detail intact. I, I want to guarantee that uh, they will behave uh, on a way that the mesh will not affect the detail that much. So this second ring is just to preserve more detail so I can make some connections here. This one and this one. Just to balance things out. And uh, this part, I want to keep the shape like a, it is like an avocado, but an avocado is like a sphere that is deformed on the vertical axis. I can understand that as a, 
a sphere or as a something close to a scene there so it will be nice if i create like three sections here so i can balance better the weights to to make it look like a 3d solid you know so let's do that by creating another segment here trying to follow the details on the mesh and for this one and maybe I can do another split here in the middle same here something like that but let's connect the dots I don't like floating vertices or floating structures on the mesh because it creates like a chaos on the deformation sometimes it works sometimes it's not so I I rather go the way that I know I am in control so from here let's connect here into the eye and let's connect here and then I can shape this curve so it's like smooth I can also bring this down here maybe or even here let's do that oops delete uh, let's do that let's create one here and one here and shape the curve again then we can like merge the the loop into the center or even here maybe or even here maybe so i keep the flow here uh, let's do the same here and merge it here okay so for me now it, it makes more sense I will create one more here to preserve the detail of the stripe but not only for the detail itself but because I know my tentacles are on this area so I need to control the deformation on this area when I apply the transform constraint that will create the illusion of 3d I, I know uh, this area I can control better the deformation so the tentacles will look like they are in place so that's why I create that much of detail if you are rigging for game you have to pay attention on the optimization so not all the times uh, this amount of vertex is good for optimization when you are working on a game game environment so check with your devs check the specification the game document so you will know your limits for bones and vertexes and you maybe need another solution for that but this if you are doing for video it's completely fine uh, I, I think it's honest like that and uh, I will bind this now I will bind first the main structure that will control this part that is these three bones let's check All right I created these two bones here to control the open and closing of the eyes if I use this mesh to close the eyes I will have a problem because it's much easier if you have like a straight surface instead of a round surface like this one because to close the eyes of this character i need to make it flat here right in the middle like the vertex they they need to be flat in the middle for the upper part and for the lower part right that's how we blink but if i do that i will create these deformations here and if i try to fix that adding more and more and more vertexes it will be crazy uh dense around here 
and it will not probably fix my problem so it's better if you have like a flat surface and then you make it a curve because you can control the deformation much better from straight to curve than if you are trying to make a curve straight so what i did in this case uh, i will add of course on the controls a little bit of deformation for this part so it can move when i move the the pupil and it can move when i move the lids so to make this work better i created two uh, two other separate images to use as eyelids and i will import now i will go to my image folder there here lower lid and upper lid let's bring the lower lid first let's put it here then we bring the upper lid and we need to make it uh need to change the order if I filter the slots and drag it down the body, it needs to be over the purple and the specular. Maybe we can put it here so we have a group, a knife group here, just just for organization. Uh, and then and then you can see it, it's like part of the character now. We can do some small adjustment because the character is not completely on the vertical so let's turn a little bit the asset just to match the position and from here i can start meshing and then i will apply this uh, first let's take the part let's link it to the head so it can follow and now we can start meshing let's turn to a mesh edit trace in this case the outer part is not that important because it's hidden but uh, the density for the flat part it will be important because it will it will be it will be the part that we are going to see uh, this is not a flat uh, part in, in terms of design it's like embracing the eyes so the eyes are a globe technically this is not flat on the face but it's also has a sphere deformation so i can assume that let's delete this one because this will impact the way let's just balance the vertex a little bit here so they are the count are good yes so we have a symmetry now <laughs> but what i am trying to explain here is that this is a sphere uh, surface so uh, it doesn't make sense if i put the vertex even here with the same spacing between them because it's like a sphere so i have to consider this is kind of in perspective and if you if you put uh dots around a sphere they are spaced uh with the same interval and if you look at the sphere in front you see uh, the deformation that the perspective uh, causes so it happens that the the vertex that you see closer to the edge of the sphere uh, they will be closer because of the perspective deformation so we can try to simulate this here because it will be more realistic when i close the lid and i will need more vertexes around here but i want to start with a basic structure so we can see later where we need to put more more vertexes so i can start with this and let's bind it i will i i, I change the shape of the bonds just to make it easy to see which control is up which control is down i will bind this to this main control the body control and to the upper control and if i check my weights right now i want to make all the vertex like 100 percent on the body and i will start adjusting just the control for open the the eyes so let's make this around a quarter 
then we will add a little bit here and here then we can increase the weight as we go to the center like to the center i can go like this let's make this halfway we will add just this we will refine all of this but i i need to to have a start and i know this is because of the perspective and the distance between the vertex i know this this is not like a constant weight i need a, like this difference so i when i change this you can see a little bit of this here because of the different of the ways it it will create my my curve as it should but to adjust that uh, we will fix that on the animation mode actually so I have my character here let's create another animation let's do test so it's back on the original position and here I can create a keyframe on the zero and something around here bring it up and now I can shape my curve here because uh, weights are something that I can change on the animate mode without creating keyframes. So I can come here like direct and select my control here. And then I can select the vertex I need to fix and create the curve that I need. Something like that. And then I can see if it's working or not. This is what I'm telling you. Uh, when I open and close now, I have the deformation as if it is like a sphere. Because of the distance of the vertexes and because of the difference of the weight. So it behaves like a sphere. But we will need more vertex because you see there is some hard edges here. And we can fix that by adding more. But once I have the basic curve defined I can add more on the setup mode let's create let's put more here here and here and when I do that if I check the weights uh, it creates like a proportional balance between one vertex in the other so the vertex in the middle it will be automatically in the middle in terms of value so if I go back now you see the curve is almost preserved and I can I need and I need just to fix uh, not fix but polish the details that I need this is happening because of triangle you see we fixed that Th this is like one triangle overlapping the other let's see I, I don't think we can see the triangles here on the animate mode but if I turn to edit mesh here I can see the triangle so when one triangle this is a big triangle overlaps the other triangle uh, you, you have those uh, strange deformations we can fix that by creating more structures in the middle but since it is like a semi-sphere i need to create something that i that will give me a flow uh on on the same shape if i just do this i still have my pointy uh, triangles here so if i do something like this and create like an inside curve it will give me like smaller triangles so the overlapping it will be much uh, lower I can even do that like to preserve the border let's see if this will fix the problem and then we can test it here It still happen on the extremes because here it's like the deforming like very in an extreme way so maybe it's better to fix that on the animation mode you see the curves are kind of not deforming correctly 
uh, when I have the, the vertex aligned by a line, it's easier for a spine to distribute the weight. But here, uh, when I have vertexes in the middle of the of the asset, uh, it could cause uh, weird deformations. So it's better if we go to the animation mode, and you see uh, my this curve is going much higher than this curve. So maybe I need to fix this secondary curve to fix the deformation when it's here. You see, because they are overlapping right here. So maybe I can increase the weights here. Let's try proportionally. I need to select a bone. You see, the details are coming back now. Even here. And then it will be easier for me to refine the curve. Yep, looks good. And then I can check it again. Maybe I'm not selecting this and hiding the bones. So it, it's working. Uh, I can do something here to make it more realistic. Is uh, when, I, when I bring my upper lid up, I can have some deformation here just to make it more uh, flashy, you know? But to do that, I need to add uh, this control to the body mesh. If I do this on the animate mode, it will accept that, but it will create a weird deformation uh, later if I need to fix the weights for the same bones. So it's better if I go back to the setup mode and then on the setup mode, I can bind the bone. And then I can adjust again on the animation mode. For me, it's better uh, if this subtle deformation happens when the eyelids are going very high so I'll put this around here and then I can select some vertexes and uh, let's select bone, the orange one. Let's give it a little bit of deformation. The ones here, uh, of course, they need less, much less. And now we have something happening when the eyelids are open and closing. I can even bring it here, but I don't know, maybe, maybe it's not a good idea. I can add for sure around here, just a little bit. Maybe it's a good idea to bring this a little bit up. Yeah, so they are close. The edges are closer. So let's do that for the lower part. Let's make it a mesh. Let's make it a loop, right? Something that is nice about eye blinking is that uh, let's make this the standard, like open eyes. Uh, this is important. Uh, you can keep it like that on the setup mode because the setup mode you it will be like the rest position or the rest pose or the or the standard pose when you start a new animation. So the way that you leave the character here with other parts showing or not 
on the all the bones on the correct positions it will it will help you when you start an animation so for any character maybe it's better to start with the open eyes and then you can manage the blinking as you need uh, in this case we start with the closed eyes because we need uh, to work on the deformation that's why uh, but it's better if I if I make this adjustment and set this as the standard pose now it is in place uh, something nice about eye blinking eye blinking happens uh, it's not just two positions like open and close position and then uh, open position again I see a lot of people animating like that and sometimes people animate like very very fast like something oops it's looping but something like that and this is not natural at all so give it time to blink uh, usually uh, we blink faster than we unblink <laughs> i don't know if this works uh, x is of course not but uh usually it's nice if you change the speed of the blinking and uh, if you watch an eye uh, real eye blinking you you will notice that there is a pause in the middle like one or two frames it depends on what your character is doing it depends on a lot of stuff actually the intention the emotion of the moment the 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 way that the, the psychology of your character a lot of variables to consider but in general you blink you can split your blinking like that like uh, quick in the start and slower when it's open the eye you know and here you have a pause like one two or one or one or two frames and it's not just a pause you because your your eyelids they are pressing each other and your upper lid it likes it like in your upper lid it it acts like the the leading no and the upper lid uh it is like leading the movement so when you when the lids when the lids uh, met when the lids meet in the center on the resting keyframes like the the pause keyframes actually you can bring it down a little bit because the upper lid is like anticipating the the return movement you know it's like absorbing the energy and preparing to open the eye again you know looks like a lot of stuff but it makes a difference and of course you need to consider who is your character and why he's blinking like that what kind of blinking it is because we we blink for many different uh, reasons when we are thinking when we are scared blinking can have a lot of meaning so it's nice to craft not only poses but also blinkings but just the fact that you are splitting the time differently for the closing and the open part it will make like a huge difference already and here i have the deformation that i wanted to have and i will do the same now on the lower part very subtle but this is what i want I, I i don't want to have much attention to this but i want this to be like a nice detail that you will notice if you really pay attention let's just bring it up a little more nope <laughs> not that more uh, you see, I was uh, adjusting this in the middle of the way, so better not. Better do that on the extreme. 
in this case is the keyframe 10. Let's bring it down a little bit, a little bit stronger. And now we'll have a better deformation. Yep. Maybe less here. Very subtle. Good, it's good. Let's change the timing so we can see because blinkings are fast, right? Not that fast. Yeah, it's deforming nicely. Just some kind of reaction happening around the eye. Okay, let's set up the, the center of the eye. And now let's let's create the the eye globe. Uh, the meshing here. Uh, what I need, what I want to do here, is just to create an illusion of different uh, of different la not layers of different deep uh, on the eye globe because the eye globe is a sphere as well. So it will deform more on the center than on the extremes. So let's edit the mesh, trace it. Maybe we don't need this amount of vertexes. Okay. Let's just refine the, the border. We don't need that much symmetry here. Just don't want a bad deformation. And let's create another one in the center, close to the center. In this case, I will not care about the, the flow that much because it's hidden. I just need uh, to give spine the information that I have this structure here. And I have a second one here. This on the center, this will follow the pupil more. So it's weird. Okay. I think it works. Uh, for the binding, I will bind to the main bone, then I will bind to the eye control. I know the people do that setup with IK for the eyes and everything to limit uh, the movement of the pupil so it's not going out on the edges. Uh, it works the same way, no problem. I just prefer to animate it myself. Uh, it gives me more freedom to deform the, the purple if I want. But it's up to you. It's it's not a problem. I just uh, like things more simple. Uh, so let's let's bind it. Uh, it's bind already. Let's configure this. So uh, the two rings they will be affected by this body here. So let's give it a little bit around 15 maybe 15 percent you can do that as well you can set the weight here for your selection and let's make this 20 and let's test it i just want i just want it to have like a very uh small rotation maybe this is too much but i'll keep it like that so we can see that it's really deforming or rotating or something like that. Now what I want to do is to have the same uh, deformation also on the body. So a very subtle deformation when I move the pupil and the eye globe turn. I want this to reflect on the body as well. So I will add the eye control here. And I will add some weights. I can I can use only the two rings that I created. And they will be like very, very subtle. Uh, let's make it around 10 maybe. No, let's make it 5. 
for the outer part and let's make it 10 for the inner part. All right. So if we test it now, you see, it's deforming. I can see my my eyelids here, so I can do the same actually. I can I can add this as a controller and uh, just put some weighting on it. I can maybe select everything since it is. Uh, hidden and make it like 10 maybe or even less maybe 10 is too much let's make it 8 let's see how it behaves yeah now I can see way less of the eyelids I'll do the same here let's bind it let's select everything and make it 8 much better now this uh, feature the specular it's like a reflection of the light of the environment it doesn't change position because it will change position if the the source of light changes position and maybe we can add some very small movement but usually I keep it uh, not moving what I can do here is like bring it a little bit down the intensity. I like to keep it in place so my my eye can can go under it. It looks like a sphere. But if it bothers you, you can like turn into a mesh, bind into the to the main control. You don't even need to trace it. You can use it like that. Just uh, make sure to add the eye control as well and make it very, very subtle. Like, let's put it on five and let's see if it works. You see, it's moving, but very, very small. We can keep it like that, it's not a problem. And then we have here. Let's see what happens if I move the pupil with the eyelid, you see? perfect it's following even when the eye the eyelid is closed good good and this is it for this part it is already very long <laughs> but i think it was a good improvement thank you for watching on the next session we will create the 3d controls to make it a little bit more round and then i hope uh, one more session and we are done with the character. Thank you for being here. Thank you for following the tutorials. I hope you, you like it and it's been helpful to you. And see you soon on the next part. Bye.